What's up guys, LOH Low Tech. The Nintendo Switch is the ultimate portable console, but with docs selling for $90, taking it everywhere can be expensive. Until now. The dock itself is a pretty straightforward device with a single Type-C USB cable connected to a metal housing for the hub. This particular example is labeled Kakoseta, but there are a number of Chinese manufacturers making the same device. As far as ports, there's a USB Type-C cable for power, HDMI out, and a full-size USB 3 for data input. As far as setup, all you need to do is connect the dock itself to power, then plug in an HDMI cable that goes out to the TV, and you're pretty much set. Just plug the USB cable into the switch itself, and the switch should appear on your TV. One benefit to this particular design is that the power requirements for the dock are very minimal. This means that you can actually power the dock using a battery bank. So if you do have one of those lying around, you can actually power the entire device using a battery bank and allow your switch to be literally played anywhere. As far as performance goes, I didn't notice anything that would indicate the Switch was running in anything other than an optimal performance mode. Uh, I didn't see that you know it wasn't getting enough power or anything like that. Um, also, the image quality looked perfect. Um, I did have one slight issue that at first it didn't want to run in 1080p mode, but it never appeared again, so I'm guessing that was just something that happened once. Um, but other than that, everything that was going through the device through onto the TV seem to be the exact same qualities that you'd be getting from the Switch dock itself. One thing to keep in mind with this device, if you are going to be using uh, something other than the official Nintendo charger, like if you're using a battery bank or if you're going to be plugging into the wall using like, your phone charger, the battery on the Switch may run out faster than your charger puts in energy since it's actually running in high performance mode. So. Uh, with the power bank, it did lose some power um, after a few minutes of playing, so you probably would only be able to play for maybe three, four hours before the battery actually ran out. If you had a high power charger for your phone, it might be a little longer than that, but if you don't have something that puts out the necessary amps um, and watts, then it's going to die eventually. Um, probably not too big of an issue if you're playing on the go, but it is something to keep in mind that you are going to want to invest in a really good charger if you plan on doing long play sessions somewhere else. So overall, should you get one? And in most cases, I'm gonna say yes. It should be something that every Switch owner has in their arsenal. It's one of the smallest docks I've seen and the ability to run off of a power pack doesn't let it go places that other docks can't. For only $30 or less, it's a great insurance plan whenever you want to take your Switch with you, just in case you find somebody who wants to play games. Since the Switch itself always has two controllers with it, with one of these you won't be forced to play on the little tiny screen of the Switch whenever you want to do multiplayer. For under 30 bucks, a little thing like this really opens up your options whenever you're playing on the go. All that being said, this does not replace a home dock by any means like yeah in basic functionality yes it does have everything that the main switch dock does have it has the usb port it has hdmi out it has the power in and that's pretty much all that you need in most cases but there are two downsides first it does not prop up the switch console at all which means the console will be laying down on down flat on the floor or on the table or whatever, or you prop it up yourself. So you might want to invest in some kind of stand to prop it up so the vents can breathe. The other thing is you, once you unplug the switch console and you plug it back in, it normally doesn't work. At least I had my experience, it hasn't worked. I've needed to unplug the cables and plug them all back in and then plug it into the switch and then it works. So if you're going to be doing that every once in a while, whenever you're, you know, going to a new place, you're probably going to have everything unplugged anyway. So you're going to plug it all in and plug it into the switch and it's work fine. But if you're going to be at home and whenever you dock it onto, you know, you're going to play on your TV behind you, having to do that every single time is going to be a pain and you're not going to want to do that. So if you don't have a switch dock for whatever reason, like yours broke and you know, you can't just replace the case or whatever, then this would be something really great to use temporarily. But as a main everyday dock, this is not something you're gonna to wanna to use. But if you do travel with your switch, given how cheap it is and how light it is and how small it is, it's something you really shouldn't be without. Thanks for watching guys, this is LOH Low Tech. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, let us know in the comments. Subscribe.